This video is intended to make you more informed about what to expect following your minimally invasive lumbar fusion. Many of the points I make in this video are also applicable to other surgeries such as microdiscectomies and endoscopic discectomies. Minimally invasive surgery is extremely successful at minimizing postoperative pain and minimizing postoperative recovery time. These surgical procedures are typically done as an outpatient or at most a single night stay in the hospital with return to normal activities in less than two weeks. But when will you be 100%? You've had back pain for many months, maybe years. You have lost a great deal of conditioning, especially in the muscles of your lumbar spine. Over the years, you've put on a few pounds, which will slow down your post-operative rehab. At 12 to 16 weeks following the surgery, your body and your back will still feel weak. In your mind, you'll be thinking, I should be well, I should be 100%. But you are 12 to 16 weeks after a major spinal surgery. It takes 12 weeks even for a sprained ankle to heal. Strengthening your core spinal muscles so that your body and your back don't feel weak takes time and dedication. My job is to encourage and to motivate you. The more you do, the quicker you do it, the better you do. Within reason. It will be several months until you can return to deadlifts, squats, or return to contact sports. Ultimately, this is about you. My goal is to see you achieve the best results possible. How long it takes for you to achieve 100% depends largely upon the goals you set for yourself and how hard you work. When do we do imaging studies following spinal surgery? X-rays are done on the day of surgery. You will be seen back in the office two weeks after the surgical procedure to evaluate the incision. The first X-rays are done 10 weeks postoperatively. If your job involves heavy lifting, Assuming the x-rays look good, you can begin core strengthening exercises at 10 weeks post-op. X-rays may also be taken at any time if there's trauma, such as a fall. Important factors regarding x-rays and radiology reports following a lumbar fusion. Bone graft used for a lumbar fusion initially is very visible on the x-rays. As blood vessels grow into the bone, the graft is not as visible on x-rays. Ultimately, the blood vessels bring healing tissue, calcium, and this results in a solid fusion. When metal or plastic cages are used, this phenomenon is not as noticeable. With invisible cages, like the ones we use, and all there is visible in the disc space is bone, this initial disappearance of bone can be frightening. But your bones will fuse. This is a normal process. Your cage is stronger than most plastic cages. A CT scan is a special type of x-ray. These have replaced normal x-rays in many emergency rooms. If you are involved in an unfortunate accident, such as a motor vehicle accident, it is likely you will be evaluated with a CT scan. Screws placed in vertebral bodies get most of their purchase in the pedicles. Screws placed in the sacrum are held in place only by weak cancellous bone. Sacral screws are frequently placed through the opposite cortex in order to get better fixation. Penetration of sacral screws is a normal CT finding. Metal and plastic cages don't fit perfectly in the rounded bones and have high pressure areas that can cut into the bone. Balloons, invisible cages, more evenly distribute the force and the disc space is less likely to collapse. 
this lack of collapse can be misinterpreted as a delayed union on a CT scan. When are MRIs indicated postoperatively? Back pain, especially mechanical back pain, numbness and paresthesias are normal findings in the initial postoperative period and should resolve with time. Therefore, in most cases, an MRI scan is not indicated. Absolute indications for a postoperative MRI. Keeping in mind that these are extremely rare and this is just for informational purposes. Any new neurologic deficit. If two or three months postoperative, you can't move your foot, you get an MRI study. Infections, either elevated temperature or laboratory studies showing you have an infection. X-rays that indicate failure of instrumentation. All of these would indicate an MRI scan is needed. But in reality, postoperatively, anytime a patient feels that for some reason they need an MRI, I will order an MRI. Important factors to keep in mind when deciding if you want an MRI scan postoperatively. Tissues vary in their water content. The MRI uses this variation to produce images. Surgery produces swelling and can result in poor image quality. It takes about 12 weeks for this swelling to resolve. Therefore, the best MRI images occur after 12 to 16 weeks post-op. Bone and other fluids are injected into the cage to elevate the disc space. Initial MRIs may indicate mild or in some cases moderate stenosis that should resolve with time as the fluid dissipates. You want to plan your MRI so that you get the best images possible. Assume the MRI you're getting is the last one the insurance company is going to let you have for a while. You have chosen to undergo a minimally invasive lumbar fusion because of the advantages of minimally invasive surgery. A smaller incision with the least amount of damage possible to normal tissue. Protection of adjacent levels. Ligaments connect and support adjacent bones, just like the cables on a bridge. A laminectomy removes the back half of the bony spinal canal. The ligaments that support the adjacent levels are cut at the same time. Without proper support, the adjacent levels will collapse. With minimally invasive surgery, we try and preserve the connections to the adjacent levels. Less scar formation. A smaller incision, less scar. A big incision where, for example, a laminectomy is done. Once the bone is removed, that space fills with scar tissue and that scar tissue engulfs the spinal cord and the associated nerve roots. Less risk of an infection. A smaller incision means less tissue damage, less of a possibility of an infection less risk of a spinal fluid leak. Removing the disc from the nerve as opposed to playing with the nerve and moving the nerve away from the disc. There are numerous other advantages to minimally invasive surgery not limited to less pain and quicker recovery. What is the main disadvantage of minimally invasive spinal surgery? Damaging the least amount of tissue possible means there is the possibility of not removing enough tissue. The good news, if it turns out that you do need a second surgical procedure to remove a piece of disc or other tissue, there's no need to repeat the entire surgery once again. The screws are well positioned and there is no need for them to be removed or revised. You do not need to remove the cages even if there is mild or moderate stenosis, the stenosis will resolve. The imaging studies will tell us exactly which nerve is impinged. That means it can be corrected by an outpatient 
micro decompression that should not significantly alter your recovery. All reasonable precautions are taken to see that this does not happen. The occurrence is extremely rare. The risk, however, is not zero. There is no surgeon and there are no types of surgical procedures that carries a 0% chance of this occurrence. I'm sure you're going to do well. Now it's time to do some rehab. Thanks for watching. But most of all, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Tell your friends and neighbors to watch. If you have any questions or any other concerns, anything I didn't cover, write Dr. Smith at El Paso Spine Center.com. Thank you.